Witnessed my first haunting in 30 years on Thursday. Haunted piano. Witnessed my first haunting in a long time today. At an old synagogue in Tacoma. Still gives me goosebumps. Involved the piano playing a single note twice while I was with a client. Apparently, one of the original rabbis passed away in the 1960s in the place. And upon asking the secretary afterwards if the place was haunted, she started shaking. She told me that everyone thought she was crazy because of the things she witnessed. When I told her about the piano, she was floored. My client, who is autistic, was the only other person with me when it happened. We both looked at each other and she told me she thought the piano was haunted. I said no, while I sat there stunned at what happened. Then it happened again, louder. We got up and left. The thing is, I've been to the synagogue about 12 times in the last 3 months and never saw or heard anything. This is an incredible sense of being watched, however. I can't explain it. My client was initially the one that heard the piano first and stared at me and said, I think the piano is haunted. It was then that I was like, holy shit, it was the piano. Then I was actively listening for it again and the second I took my mind off of it. Neither of us were facing the piano, it was to our side. It played another key even louder. The secretary said she was going to look into the age of the piano as well. She was just so happy someone else experienced something like that. I can only imagine, never once did she or anyone give a hint that the place may be haunted. Then I suddenly asked, I know this is going to sound batshit crazy, but um, how do I put this? Is this place haunted? I wish you could have seen the look on her face. A sense of relief washed over her as she was able to confirm she isn't crazy. Yeah, I still have chills thinking about it. The Republic of Plato. So I had to buy the Republic of Plato for my political theory class, and now it keeps moving around on its own. A few weeks ago, I woke up in the middle of the night with it under my pillow. I was freaked out, but dismissed it as maybe just leaving it there. About a week later, I find it in my drawers under some shirts, on top of a shirt that my stepmom got me from Greece, with like a spartan on it. So I dismissed this. Maybe one of my roommates was fucking with me. I did tell them about it the first time. Then this weekend, I left Thursday for a weekend conference in New York. I left pretty early. I made sure the book was sitting on my desk. I bought a lock for my door. There's a latch for a lock and locked it, taking the key with me. I get back here today, grab my key and unlock my door. I open the door to find the Republic of Plato lying open on the middle of my pillow to page 227, the start of the allegory of the cave, which I had been discussing with some friends in my house about two weeks prior. The door was still locked. I don't have any windows. There's no feasible way anyone could have just gone in here, not to mention everyone went home this weekend. So I am sufficiently freaked out. I've had very strange things happen to me in the past, but they've always been more or less explainable. This is really tipping the point though. I'm a rather rash, rational individual, and I'm afraid this could drive me insane. I don't like to be in the dark. Okay, so this just happened like 30 minutes or so ago. I am home alone, completely alone except for my dogs which are in the backyard. I was surfing reddit no sleep, and I heard a click outside my room far away. It was a light switch, then I heard it again and again. Went outside the room, and all my lights in the house went off one by one. I could have thought it was a power shortage. But I heard all the clicks of the switches. The hairs on the neck and arms and legs stood up, felt a cold wind. But the temperature here is at the lowest like 28 degrees. I ran to the backyard. My dog started barking like crazy. Waited like 10 minutes before going in again. Had to turn all the lights myself. Scariest shit I've experienced so far this year. Forgive my English, not my home language. Edit. Well, I don't have much to add here, but, but this. Here in my home country, it is a common practice that when you move into a new house or even when you start a business, to clean the house. Cleanse it. This means bringing a priest, be either from the church or other religions, and bless the whole entire place. I, on the other hand, have been living in this house for almost four, four to five years. When I moved in, my dad's right-hand man, Tulio, while guarding the house alone at night, said there were things in the house. We 
we paid no mind to it. At least my dad, my brother, and I. But my mom, she was scared to death. So she just had to pay for a cleaning. So Tulio called his family. They were to clean the house. And they brought from them the Santeria. It's like a branch of voodoo. A practice that came to be from the slaves brought here when America was discovered. And anyways, th these persons claimed that there were Murtos in the house. Murtos being dead spirits or ghosts. And one which was bound to the guard of the house was a young man. They cleaned the house with various common chemicals. So for an ammonia, a rock salt, a mira, a prayer, and some essences. They smelled really nice. I am a man of science. I'm just about to get a degree in engineering and informatic sciences. So I was not convinced. But since that's what my folks wanted, I was glad to help by having a positive attitude and an open mind. Anyways, we did as told. Place cross lemons in all corners of the rooms, nailing aloe vera on all room doors on this inside and such. Lastly, putting a glass of clean water by a candle on the main door. This would lead the spirits of the other side to rest, specifically the young man, since he wanted to stay guard of the house. Like I said, I'm not easy to convince, but I was thrilled. I never experienced nothing, from sounds to shadows to whatever you say, but my mom was glad the house was cleaned. What I can assure is that the house felt lighter, bigger, brighter, happier, so months came by, I start to have some nightmares. Maybe I'll make another post about it, but I attribute the nightmares to sleep paralysis. But in general, everything was paid. When my family and I were to travel for a long time, Tulio would come and watch the house for us, feed the dogs, water the garden, and stuff like that. This is important. A few years later, like last week, maybe May 22nd, my dad had an incident. He is a man of character, and has quite a temper. He is big, with a belly, arms of a gorilla, and as you may guess, a heart condition. He didn't have one, but to hearth arrest, 12 years later, he was taking care of himself. But as stubborn as he is, he dropped on and off of his treatments and medicines. Drinking a lot and eating a lot didn't help. Also, his work is very, very stressful. So long story short, my dad goes into ER for a whole day. He is taken to ICU for two days, then at last, when his heart was stable, he was placed in a common room. Since visits are very restricted, my mom, my brother, and myself just spent from Thursday to Monday in the clinic. We didn't sleep here at the house, just a few hours at night. Let me put some context here. Just think of the worst functional hospital in the USA. That would be the most expensive private clinic here. So we couldn't afford to leave my dad alone, even if we were not allowed to be by his side. So my brother and I took his truck and went and came to the house to get him pillows, soap, underwear, and blankets. It may sound strange to you, but that's a reality here, even when my family has a full coverage insurance against all scenarios. So the house was alone. We had to eat outside from the street vendors. We ate twice from Subway, but mostly the street vendors. On Sunday, I got sick. Something I ate, diarrhea, fever, and cramps. So I stayed at my girlfriend's house who lives in the downtown near the clinic. And Monday couldn't take it anymore and spent the whole day glued to the toilets in the house alone. While I was not shitting, I was sleeping, sweating the fever away. Around 5 p.m., I got up, feeling better, and called my mom. She told my dad was being discharged and coming home. Oh, what a relief. This is where this story comes in. I was surfing Red Let's Not Me, Killing Time. When I heard when I heard the light switches, you know? I thought that mom, dad, and my brother had come home just to experience what I told you earlier. Hours later, after, da after dad came home, I started telling my brother about the lights, and my mom overheard us. So I switched the subject since she's scared very easily. A while later, my dad asked me to tell him what happened. So I tell him and my brother the whole thing. He told not to pay attention to it. And if it came to it, just tell them to fuck off and leave me alone. Them. My dad is a full skeptic, so I didn't understand why he told me that. So my mom keeps nagging me to tell her, so I tell her. I thought that nobody would believe me, but my dad just went along with it and said what he said. And now my mom, my mom told me that when Tulio stayed in the house, they would turn off the lights in front of him too. That creeped me out. My brother looks at me, we try to laugh it off, and then it's like he realizes that this is no joke, and I see the fear in him, and he points out what I failed to realize at that moment. It's like people always wait for us to leave to come in here. Fuck it. Seriously? Hallucination or this happened once last week and I thought nothing of it. Then it happened again this morning when I woke up and I'm very afraid and have a few questions and concerns. 
I recently started taking melatonin to help me to get to sleep faster. I'm not sure if it has anything to do with my problem, but it's occurred twice since I started taking it, so I can't rule it out as a possibility. Anyways, Thursday night of last week, I popped a melatonin and hit the hay, falling asleep almost immediately. I remember waking up at around 5am, but since there was no need to be up that early, I decided to try to get another hour or so of rest before getting up. As I began drifting off, I heard my name being called as if someone was right beside me. I did not recognize the voice. Come to think of it, I can't remember what it sounded like at all, to be honest, only that it happened. Suddenly I was aware I couldn't move anything except my eyes. I had enough sense to realize that I was in a state of hypnagogia, and I remember my friend telling me about his experience with sleep paralysis. I tried to remain calm, but I couldn't help from panicking a little bit. My room was fairly dark save for the light, coming from the street lamp outside my house. What happened next was terrifying, and I still have trouble processing it. There was movement in my peripheral vision that caught my attention. It was a tall shadow that resembled a male human in its autonomy. As it got closer, I noticed that its physical structure was odd. It was made of what appeared to be small particles, black ones, that were rapidly moving around, like black sand vaguely resembling the shape of a man. As I got closer and closer, I, I started losing my hearing, although there wasn't much noise to begin with, just atmospheric things like wind against trees, and a fan in the hallway outside my room, but it was a noticeable difference when I could not hear it. When the figure stopped, it was standing right beside my bed, seemingly peering down at me. In addition to my hearing loss, I felt, for a lack of a better word, drained, physically and mentally. I've never been so afraid in my whole entire life. After a while, I left through the door that was slightly ajar, and eventually I was able to move again. The further away it was from me, the more I was able to hear it. As it left, I slowly regained my ability to hear. I'm posting this because it happened once, and I wrote it off as a realistic nightmare. Then it happened again this morning, almost in the exact same way. I looked up this problem and found out that other people have experienced a shadowy visitor or the old hag during this kind of situation. I want to know your opinions. Should I seek help? Is my mind just inventing these experiences? Am I really being visited in the nighttime? Have you encountered anything like this before? Sorry, sorry for the long post, but I want to include as much detail as I could. Things have taken a turn with his presence in our home. On my first post, I talk about something that keeps scaring my son. It follows him around the house and keeps him from sleeping or even being a normal content baby. The entity initially just showed himself to the baby, and we didn't realize something was bothering my son until he started screaming at the walls and blank areas. I've only witnessed a few things in the beginning like strange constant knocking, someone walking in the hallway while no one was there, nothing too creepy until a few days ago. Last Thursday night, my son woke up for his usual 2am bottle and something in the room felt off. When my son started to try and go back to sleep, he kept screaming and crying looking at the wall again. My boyfriend covered the baby's eyes and that's when he calmed down. A few minutes later, my boyfriend said it felt like something walked through him and sent a chill down his spine. Since then, a few odd things have happened while I was in the midst of getting my son's bath ready and I heard a big thump. I came back into the room and at first... I didn't realize, but when I saw my TV laying flat against the TV stand, just weird when it's hanging on nails. That's when we were all watching a movie in our room. My boyfriend was sitting on the couch. I'm laying across the bed, and the baby was knocked out on the other side of the bed. As we're talking, from the corner of my eye, I see something smack our space heater. The heater moves for about six seconds and stops. I jump and scream, oh my god, did you see that? And of course, my boyfriend says he didn't see anything, so I left it alone. The next night, we're getting ready for bed, and I'm laying down with a baby, and I hear a smack noise and a plastic bag rattle. My boyfriend sits up and looks so confused, so naturally, I'm like, what happened? You're gonna love this. I get all confused. He goes on and says, One of the belts hanging down swung out of nowhere and smacked the trash that we had in our room. The trash can. He said it swung and stopped right away like someone grabbed it. It seemed just so weird for him to react like that when he's such a goddamn skeptic. Talking amongst my family members about everything that's been going on, they believe the entity is showing itself one step at a time because we're talking about moving out. I, I, I initially, I believe it was bothering my son, but they, there was a conversation about the entity showing itself when we decided to move out of the home and buy our first home. I honestly don't know what to think anymore. I promise we're not crazy or anything.
Wendigo encounter? Weirdest thing that's ever happened to me. It was September of 2017, and I was going on a trip with my entire small 40-person grade from Monday to Friday. I won't say exactly where we were staying, but it was in Algonquin Park. I fly through the first few days as they were pretty uneventful. We played games, socialized, and did a bunch of other stuff. Cool stuff, to be honest. On Wednesday, we had a very odd experience with a hermit, but that's for another story. And that story actually has resulted in me making one of my best friends, the best friend and one of my least favorite people. I'll just say this right now, my cabin had around eight guys in it. The day is Thursday. The guys in my cabin wake up really early so we can get to the showers before the rest of the guys from our school and the guys from the other school as well. Sometime during this whole process, my best friend, let's call him Jack, loses his glasses. Jack has the worst eyesight by far out of anybody I know, and he is good as blind without them. I'm looking for his glasses for like an hour, but I can't find them anywhere. Jack can't participate in any activities now, so he just sits down on his bed or in our cabin the entire time. I tell the teachers and counselors that I'll stay with him in the cabin. The last two days were the most fun days, and I miss them. But I was actually really glad I missed them, because I had a really great bonding experience with Jack and one of the counselors. Let's call her Kylie. She was around 17 to 18 years old and so unattractive. We talked about what she wanted to be when she was older. She wanted to be a lawyer. I talked to her about how I wanted to be a music producer and a DJ when I got older, and how I already made music. I talked to her about how my biggest dreams were to perform at Tomorrowland or to collab with an extremely talented artist. I also talk about how I felt pressure to become famous, because that's all anybody would ever talk about to me, and how I nailed the production part, but I don't know how to get the recognition. It felt great getting lots of this off my chest, and I felt good for the next little while. After skip skipping a late night activity, me, someone will call Y, and someone will call J, all went to the bathroom together. Y and J are brothers. The bathrooms are about a three minute walk from our cabin, and we prefer to go in groups because the walk there and everything around the bathroom was creepy as shit. On the way back, the first strange occurrence happened. Y and I both said holy shit or what the hell or something like that at the exact same time. We saw a man in completely gray clothing with a gray hoodie pulled over his head and gray sweatpants walk straight into the woods past the abandoned outhouse. We didn't see anybody's face. For all we know, it might not have been a man at all. I, I, I wasn't anybody from the school and wasn't a counselor or a teacher either. I won't go into details about how I know about this because it'll take me too, too long. But trust me, there were shitty trails that went into the woods. But this guy was way off any of the trails in the area. We had no clue what happened because after he entered the thick woods, we couldn't see him anymore. To add to everything, it was also pitch black out. We had no idea what we saw, but we told the counselor and they just brushed it off. Every single night, one's counselor would wait outside one individual cabin on the deck, waiting until it was late enough. The counselors would tell us all to shut up and to go to sleep, and we would all tell each other that because we'd all get mad at each other for making a noise. Something weird happened, though. We were all getting mad at each other for making noises, then we were silent for a good five minutes, and that's usually how you know people are going to sleep. After about five minutes, my friend's very recognizable high-pitched voice says, Guys, shut up and just go to sleep. This was unbelievably loud, and me being startled said, Who said that? I obviously knew it was one of my friends, but I was just so startled by it. Nobody else even moved. That would definitely be enough to wake everybody, but somehow I was the only one that heard it. I thought I was going absolutely insane. At around 3.30 a.m. in the morning, Jay wakes me up because he has to go to the bathroom. I go with him to the bathroom, and we both sprint back because we get very paranoid at nighttime. Jay falls asleep before me, making me... The only person that heard this. A high-pitched voice, singing a note, sustaining the pitch very nicely, coming from right outside of our screen window. The singer's voice would break around every six to seven seconds, as if the person singing was crying. It, it wasn't a voice crack, but just as if they were losing breath and losing hope. It, it, it was insane. At this point, I'm so unbelievably scared, I wake Jay up and tell him that I heard some weird shit outside the cabin. Jay, being paranoid and the nicest guy I ever know, immediately believes me and sees the genuine terror on my face. The door started to shake lightly, and we heard scratching on the walls. The door was shaking. Could have just been the wind, and the scratching was most likely just mics. We stayed up for another half hour waiting for the sounds to come back, but we somehow ended up falling asleep. This is one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. 
I feel like nothing is related. Everything you heard in the story is 100% true, except for the names other than mine. Please give me ideas on what you think happened with everything. This happened last Thursday. So last Thursday, my husband went out to a friend's place, and my kids were fast asleep. I was laying in bed with my two dogs. I wasn't really doing anything, just playing around on Facebook and watching YouTube. Well, around 9.30, weird things started happening. First, I tried to take my dogs out. Neither of them would step off the front porch. Every time I would pull on them, they would plant their feet into the porch and just stay there. I took them out separately, but just thought maybe there was a scent that was bugging them. They're dogs, they're weird. When we got back upstairs, I was reading an article about 13 insensitive Halloween costumes in Cosmo when I heard footsteps on the stairs. I assumed it was my daughter sleepwalking, so I instantly bolted out of bed to go and get her. Thing is, there was no one there. I went back to bed. About 10 minutes or so later, I hear a knock at the door and footsteps walking from the front door to the kitchen area. Assuming it was my husband, I called up to him but got no answer. I then went downstairs and no one was there or at that door. I was a little freaked out to be honest, and my dogs were acting very strange. So I checked all the doors, made sure no one was in the house, checked on my daughter to make sure they were in bed, and then went back upstairs. This time I barely got in bed when I heard a man's cough, almost like someone clearing their throat. Right outside my bedroom door, I wasn't the only one to hear it because both dogs lifted their heads and my older dog started to have a low growl. I slowly opened my door and no one was there. So I ran through the entire house again, triple checked the doors and at this time, I checked the windows too. On my way to check the back door, I noticed the fridge door was wide open. I instantly slammed it shut, ran upstairs and waited out the rest of the time until my husband got home. There was a ton of other noises and my dogs were going nuts. At one point, my pup was actually shaking but everything just stopped once my husband walked in the front door. It was such a strange night and just thinking about it makes me have goosebumps. Just wanted to share with some other people because my husband and best friend just shrugged it off as my mind playing tricks on me. My brother believes me because he knows I just won't make this stuff up, you know? Obviously something freaked me out though because I had to sleep with my phone flashlight on all night. Th that isn't normal. This happened last Thursday, update. So Thursday, October the 6th, I've had that weird experience of hearing someone or something in my home. Things are getting stranger, and I could really use some advice. Simply put, whatever it is started to bug my daughters, more specifically my youngest daughter, we'll call her S. Since my experiences, I've been having issues getting S to sleep in her own room, especially if the door is closed. She will start in her room, but then she will sneak to my other daughter's room and sleep in her bed. Last night was no exception, only thing is now I know why. Last night started off normal, put the kids to bed. S wasn't cooperative, she wanted to sleep with her sister. We always tried to encourage her to sleep in her own bed, because she tends to kick and talk in her sleep. So S started in her room, but insisted on keeping the door open, which was fine with us. She and her sister M went to bed at 7pm. When I checked on them at 8.30pm before going to bed myself, they were both sound asleep in their beds. At about 4 a.m., I got up to use the bathroom. As I passed S's room, the door was closed and I heard soft voices. Similar to when girls are playing with their Monster High dolls, I opened the door, expecting to see S having an early morning play session, only to see no one in bed. Now, logically, I know she is upstairs, but you always get this sort of punch in the stomach feeling when your kid isn't where they're supposed to be. So I rush over to my other daughter's room and sure enough, both girls are sleeping in there with the lamp on. Okay, it's 4 a.m. I'm not going to wake them up now. I flipped off the lights and went to the bathroom and went to bed. I completely forgot about hearing voices in that room at the time. This morning, I woke the girls up and asked as why she was in her bed with her sister. She told me that she was scared of the voices calling her name last night. I asked her to explain. So please keep in mind, she is four years old. This could have just been like a dream or something that scared her. This is what she described to me. I was sleeping and then... I woke up. It was very dark and my door was closed. 
I got up to open it and I heard somebody say S over and over again. And I turned my light on and no one was even there. I tried to go back to sleep but someone kept saying S. So I got up and ran to M's room and sleep with her. Now, I'm trying to stay skeptical here, but I want to protect my daughters in case this is all real and something is here terrorizing us. I mean, it is completely possible that I misheard voices in her room, and it is entirely possible that she was having a bad dream before she went to my other daughter's room. I just don't want to be an idiot either, so if anyone has any suggestions on what I can do before we move at the end of the month, I would be very grateful. I, I am so scared that something could possibly happen that is way more serious than just hearing things. And before anyone says anything, we didn't have any TVs or radios on, and we live in a full house with no other people, just my husband, daughters, dogs, and myself here in this house. Thank you guys. I, I really appreciate it.